one very common application of exponential functions is interest. Everybody loves money, right? No. No. The love of money. No. You get taken for that. All right. Um, Okay. All right, so there are two formulas that we need to be familiar with here for uh, compounding interest for exponential functions. The first one is if the interest is compounded a certain number of times per year. We've got this formula here that has several variables, so let's label what these variables represent. A is the amount after t years. Okay, P is the principal, not Mrs. Hodges, but the amount that you initially invest. Oh, you're such a tough crowd, man. <laughs> I know, it's bad. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's see here. R is your rate. Something that you have to remember with the rate is you have to convert the percent to decimal form. It may already be a decimal, but you've got to convert it to decimal form. So remember, how do you convert a percent to a decimal? Move it two places to the left. Okay, two places to the left percent to decimal form. Um, N is the number of times per year. So that could be monthly, weekly, uh, quarterly, daily. They could just tell you 10 times in a year. That's really weird, but they could, okay? Um, and then T is the number of years. Now, I don't know whether they will give you this equation, like if they give you a problem, I don't know whether at the end of the problem they'll put this equation or not. I know they don't give you a formula sheet, but they may embed some formulas within the test. I don't know whether they give this to you or not. So it's in your best interest to learn it. Um, I know it seems complicated, but we're going to do several problems here, and hopefully it will kind of sink in. Um, the other case is that we could have continuously compounded interest. Now, you will see that specific word. If you do not see compounded continuously or continuously compounded interest, you do not use this formula. Okay? You do not use this formula or vice versa. If you see the word continuously, this is the formula you use. Um, A and P still mean the same thing. E is the button on your calculator okay it's not a it's not another variable it is the the uh, number that we've been dealing with r is still the rate um, and t is still the number of years okay so nothing else really changes except um, the formula gets a lot simpler uh, Okay, so the biggest thing with these, these are really easy problems. You just have to be really careful when you type them into your calculator. Make sure you get parentheses in the right places if you need parentheses. Okay? You're always so happy. All right, so let's look at this example. You invest $12,000. That would be our P at an annual rate of 3%, so R is 0 0.03, if we move that decimal two places to the left. Find the balance after five years, that's our T. Find the balance, that is what we're looking for, we're looking for A. And then we've got three different scenarios here. When the interest is compounded quarterly, quarterly means four times per year so first scenario n equals four so let's set up our equation a equals the principal twelve thousand times one plus the rate expressed as a decimal point zero three over n which in this case is four to the n times t four times five 
And then now it's just a matter of typing it into our calculator. But you got to be careful, okay? If you are not careful, you will get very, very different answers from the actual correct answer. Okay, 12,000 parentheses. You don't need to add any extra parentheses in there, okay? Just type it straight in. 1 plus 0 0.03 over 4, it'll do it the way it's supposed to. Raised to the, now in my opinion, it's easier just to say 4 times 5 is 20. Okay, go ahead and type in 20. If you don't type in 20, then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to put the 4 times 5 in parentheses because if you don't put it in parentheses, notice I get the same answer here, but if I take those parentheses away, I get a very different answer because what my calculator is going to do is it's going to raise that to the 4th power and then it's going to multiply by 5 instead of raising the whole thing to the 4 fifths power. Okay, two very different answers. The first answer is the correct answer. $13,934.21. This is money, so we round to two numbers after the decimal place. Okay, um, everything else stays the same, but we compound it monthly, so N changes to 12. So everything else in the equation stays the same except for n is 12. So let's see if we make some more money compounding it monthly as opposed to quarterly. 5 times 12 is 60. So we make $13,934.21. So about five more dollars over these five years by compounding it a little bit more frequently every year. Well, our last scenario is continuously, so that's PERT, P, E to the R times T, uh, T is five, T is still the number of years, so that means that the money is being compounded like as, as often as is physically possible. Okay, it's just constantly recalculating and compounding um, over and over and over again. Now the nice thing about uh, the PERT formula, the E automatically starts the parentheses for you. So you don't necessarily have to worry about putting the R times T in parentheses. Um, it kind of takes care of that issue for you. Um, so when it's continuously, $942.01. So not really that much more. It's only like $3 more when it's compounded continuously versus monthly. Okay. Um, now let me give you a little heads up about the real world. 3% interest, uh, very hard to find on just like a basic uh, savings uh, account or something like that, they're not going to give you 3% interest. You'll be lucky if you get like 1 point something uh, percent interest. You've got to be investing in some pretty higher risk uh, funds to, to earn 3% uh, interest, just so you know. Um, or you've got to agree to like not touch the money for 10 years or something like that uh, to earn that kind of interest, just so you know. Okay, all right, so just to make sure everybody's good with typing these into your calculator, I want you to do the practice problem there. That sounds like fun, right? No, it really doesn't. Really, actually, it's not good. Change or something like that? Yes. Overlapping. Look at that. Okay, in 1986, before I was even born, um, a nuclear reactor accident occurred in Chernobyl in what was then the Soviet Union, which is right outside of Russia now. Uh, the explosion spread highly toxic radioactive chemicals such as plutonium over hundreds of, so of square miles and the government evacuated the city and the surrounding area. To this day, the city is still uninhabited and there's a reason for that that we're going to discover. This model represents the decay of uh, the plutonium. This is how much plutonium is left after an initial amount of just 10 pounds. Just 10 pounds of plutonium um, was released after T years. T equals zero represents 1986. You've got to be careful with these application problems 
when they throw little tidbits in there like that. Because you want to make sure that if they're asking you about 1986, you don't plug 1986 into T. You've got to realize that T equals 0 is 1986. So let's answer these questions. How much of the 10 pounds will remain in the year 2017? So, how many, that's this year, how many years has it been since 1986? 31. 31. I am 29. I was born in 1988. So, 31 years. So, T is 31. Okay. Huh? Uh -huh. Yeah, 29. No, nope. I was last year. 29 and 9 days old. Yeah. Okay, anyways, back to the plutonium. Okay, anyways, we're plugging in 31 for T. Let's see how much of plutonium is still hanging out in Chernobyl. 10 parentheses, 1 half to the parentheses, 31 over 24,100. Wow, it hasn't decayed very much. 9.991 pounds. So less than a tenth. Less than a tenth of a pound has decayed. That's not very good. Still hanging around. Um, how about after 100,000? Okay, after 100,000 years. So we don't have to do any converting here. We can just type in 100,000. Because it just wants to know after that many years. Now, after 100,000 years, it might be safe. Only half a pound is going to be hanging out. Um, but that's still uh, radioactive. I don't think I want to even play with uh, half a pound of radioactive material probably still doesn't have very good effects on the body. Okay, now this is probably what we have talked about in chemistry and biology. What's the length of the half-life of plutonium? So let's think about this for a second. How can we figure out the length of the half-life? So we're trying to find T in this case. So that must mean that we know what the equation is equal to. <clears throat> what does a half-life mean? Um, for, half For half of it to be there. So how much do we start with? 10 pounds. So half of it would be 5 pounds. So we divide both sides by 10. 5 over 10 is 1 half. Well, this is convenient. They have the same base. So what can we do? We can just set their exponents equal to each other. 1 is equal to t over 24,100. How do we solve for t? Multiply. So what is the length of the half-life? 24,100 years. So it takes 24,100 years for half of this radioactive plutonium to decay. That's a really long time. Uh, it's a really long time. So it's going to be hanging out for a while. Nobody's going to be living in Chernobyl for a very long time. It probably ever before the Earth just, you know, goes. All right. Fun stuff. Okay, let's look at example three. Okay, let's consider this model 500 times 0.2 to the x. Let's make a quick sketch of this based on what we know about exponential functions. So the biggest thing that we know is that the base, whether it's bigger than one, if it's bigger than one, what uh, does our exponential function do? 